hello uh, great people uh, I'm so happy and so grateful that uh, you've, uh, you've quitted some time to tune in to my video and just to watch and uh, remember to always subscribe like and uh, share and if, you, if you've always been blessed by my messages mm -hmm. you can also remember to comment uh, at the comment uh, the comment place friends I'm so happy to again to again meet you uh, and I want to believe that your day is good and that uh, you're having some good time at home during this coronavirus season. I so believe that, uh, that we are able to transact our businesses, we are able to move from one place to another and even just to live at peace. So today, like any other days, friends, allow me to talk to us on uh, how, to, uh, how to overcome sadness. And it's something that uh, that we many of us have gone through. It's something that uh, we are many of us are fighting, but so, so easy to conquer it. And I want to today I will be focusing on the three strat on the six strategies on how you can conquer sadness. And I believe that by the end of it, we shall all be blessed. So I'll begin by defining sadness. So what is sadness? Sadness is emotional pain that comes from loss, despair, grief, sorrow, or helplessness. It is an emotional thing. It's something that develops from within. So you know each and every time you get sad, you, it all, it's something that develops from within. So uh, this uh, sadness, the reason why I prepared this is because we have so many people who are affected by this. Uh, maybe in one way or the other, you get hurt by your friend. Maybe your friend fails to do something which you wanted him uh, to do, and you end up being sad. Or maybe you had opened up a business, you employed someone, but that someone that you've employed fails to comply with the regulations of the organization. So you also get sad. Or maybe, or maybe because of, a, of, because of being, a, of being a stopped from working, you may end up getting sad, or some people get sad because they lack money. It's something that uh, we all must overcome. So instead of you engaging in, uh, in conflict, it's always good that we always learn and train ourselves uh, on how we can overcome this sadness. So I say that sadness is an emotional pain. It is a pain. It's something that hurts you because of something that happened sometimes back. Uh, there's uh, the guys who messed you up some times back. So it's something that, uh, it's a pain that develops from within. So you know, it's an emotional pain that comes from loss. Maybe you lost something, you lost your house, you lost your friend, and uh, you get sad. You lost your business, you lost some things in your house, people came and stole your, your property, so you get sad. And uh, you get yourself engaging into, into uh into conflicts and uh, fighting with people. Uh, so instead of you getting there, I want to focus on the six strategies on how you can conquer sadness. And strategy number one is to cry it out, is to cry it out. So crying at some point, it might seem as a weakness to many of us because many of us are asking, how can I cry when I'm sad? But I can tell you that crying is healthy. We also see in the Bible where when Jesus, uh, when Jesus heard that his friend Lazarus had died, he went there and we are told that he wept. So when we cry, we don't repress our sadness because repression can lead to depression. So we don't repress our sadness when we are crying. So crying is healthy. When you cry, your body relaxes and I encourage us all to cry. Anytime you're sad, do not go to isolate yourself. Many of us, when we are sad, we get, we get to our own pleasures and say that I'm not going to engage with people. Always engage with people and learn to interact with people. And quiet out, just quiet out. So strategy number one is to quiet. I always say that cry it out. Just quiet, let it go. It will heal. Crying is healthy. God... Uh, the God, there's a reason as to why God, God made us tears. It's good that you use them. Just cry, cry. It will heal. 
At some point, it might seem like something that cannot work. But if you try it out, I believe me, you friend, you'll, your wound will be healed. Number two strategy is to exercise. Learn to exercise. It makes us focus on something other than our sadness while we are working out. So exercise makes us, makes us focus on something that's more beautiful. And uh, other than just... Uh, other than remaining there and isolating yourself, that when you're sad, I don't want to talk to people, I don't want to associate with people. I've come here to encourage you, friend, that when you're sad, do not isolate, with, do not isolate yourself, but go out and engage yourself in exercise. If sadness is your constant companion, take it on a run. If it's your constant companion, if it's something that you keep on, if you keep on experiencing, if it's your weakness, then take it on a run. You can run for, for one kilometer or you can do so, you can go for gymnastics and just train yourself. The moment you sweat, the moment uh, the moment you go out running, you playing football, you are a football fan, uh, engaging yourself in co-curricular activities like jumping and many others, you can get yourself that uh, your body will relax and you'll feel much healthier. And uh, the, good, the good advantage of it is that uh, there are high chances of you forgetting, uh, forgetting that you're sad. And therefore, you'll end up being happy, being happy. Uh, exercise helps us, helps to relieve you. It makes you healthier. It makes you, it makes you, uh, it makes you much better. So I encourage you that when you're sad, when you're sad, always, always, uh, always go to, always run. If sadness is your companion, if it's, if it's your constant companion, remember this, take it on a run. So strategy number three is to listen to music. It relaxes you. Music relaxes you and shifts your focus onto something more beautiful, more beautiful and higher than you. So listening to music also shifts your focus onto something more beautiful and something that is higher than you. So I also encourage us all to learn to listen to music. And listening to music, I can say that you don't just listen to any music. There are those music that have good encouragement, there are those music that can build you, there are those music that can develop you. So if you, do, if you listen to those music, I believe that you'll grow. So you can listen to scripture and God's word can fill you, can fill your heart. And listen to scripture to God's word. So if you are a believer, you, I encourage you to listen to gospel songs. We have good gospel songs that hears, like we have one that says that I am the Lord, that he led thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I send your word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. So such like songs will relieve you. You'll feel better that I am the Lord. That is the promise of God that I am the Lord that healeth you. So I don't have to get sad because the Lord heals us. We serve a God who heals. Then we have that, the other one that says, Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So learn to listen to music. You'll experience God's presence. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 3, but you are holy who inhabits the praises of Israel. So God inhabits into our praises. If you praise him, then uh, if, if you praise him, then he, your, his presence will fill you. So I encourage us all when we are sad to listen to, to good music. Not just any music, but music, a good and encouraging music. Number three, if you're sad, smile. I'll, I'll read from the book of Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 3. The Bible say, But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice every day. Let the righteous be glad. 
a righteous is someone that honors the that uh, that works according to the will of God and and someone that commits himself to the things of God. So let the righteous be glad. Do not do not be sad. Be glad when you're sad. Just smile. And in Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22, they say in Bible say a cheerful a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a Christ spirit dries up the bones a cheerful heart a cheerful heart a happy heart is good medicine so when you're cheerful it's a good medicine for your sadness the probability is that you'll you'll be healed you'll not get sad i pray and i believe that we are all going to to experience uh the dynamic blessings of god we are not going to get to to always just be sad at any given point but the lord is going to help us to grow so again let god speak to you my friend the truth through his mouth his mouth is habakkuk i habakkuk was facing uh habakkuk was facing international he was facing international disasters and i read what he said in the book of habakkuk chapter 3 and uh Starting from verse 17 to 18, he said that though the fig tree may not blossom, not fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock, the flock be cut off from the, from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice. I love what he said, that yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the Lord of my salvation. I will rejoice in the Lord of my salvation. Learn to rejoice. I will rejoice that though things are not working out well. Habakkuk was facing, was going to international disasters, one after the other. But after all, he came out and said that I will rejoice. I also love what Job said, that though he slays me, though he takes me out of this earth, but I will trust in him. Do we have a people who always rejoice when a when they are sad, when going through difficulties, when things are not working out well on their side, when things have taken a, a different direction, are we going to be glad? Are we going to rejoice in the midst of challenges? Or are we going to isolate ourselves? It's always good to smile when you're sad. The number three is to hang out with friends. It's another thing that when you develop yourself and train yourself, it will heal your wound and, it will, and uh, you will not be sad at any time. So we tend to isolate ourselves when we are sad. And it's something that many of us do. That when we are sad, we tend to isolate yourself. Learn to associate with people. And this I can say, we have, well, as, uh, as we continue living this life, we meet different kinds of people and different kinds of friends. So there are those friends who, who are so good. And are those friends who, when you meet, they can encourage you. They can, they can make you happier. So when you, when you, I, when you, when you interact yourself and when you, when you walk with those people and hang out with them and just walk, uh, walk from one place to the other, you'll find that uh, they keep you active, they keep you smiling, they tell you stories, and many times you'll, he you'll see that your wound will heal. And, it, and, uh, you, and we just feel like, uh, like it's much awkward for me to get sad. I don't want to get sad, but I just want to be happy. So when you when you when you when you're sad, always look for those friends who are always good and those friends that motivates you and hang out with them. You can share your you can share your story with them. You can share what you're going through with them. That those friends who are good and they can encourage you. And I always I always learn I always uh, encourage people to always work with those friends, mostly who have the word of God within them. Those who develop themselves in the law. Then the other strategy, I say number six, the sixth strategy is to pray, or I can call it to steal your soul, steal of S T I double L, steal your soul, or to pray. So take time. I, I had some point here that I prepared, and I, I read it to, to us. Now take time to meditate, take time to pray and meditate. Take time to pray and meditate on the word of God. Take time to pray. Tell God what you're going through. That Lord, Lord, I'm going through this and this. I commit it before you. Lord, heal me. Lord, set me free. 
So invite God into your sadness. Let God know what you're going through. It's a is he's, he's your father. He say he's your father. He never leaves you. He'll never forget you. He's always there. We we have this song that sings that I have a father. He knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. And hears me when I call. So we have a father that hears us when we call. You know, many, many of us, when we are sad, we, we seem to isolate ourselves and think that we are lonely. I come here to encourage us all and to tell us all that we have a good father. We have a father who cares for us. We have a father who loves us. He said that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever believes, believes, believes. If we just believe in him, if we just believe in his saving power, then we shall have everlasting life. It's always good to always to always believe in the Lord. Believe God for your for your for a miracle. Believe God for a breakthrough. In in every area of your life, just believe God and He'll work it out. So God's presence can answer your sadness with hope. God's presence, if you invite God into your sadness, then uh, you meditate upon His word and you pray and say that Lord, this is what I'm going through. Then He'll bring hope. It's a God of hope. We serve a God of hope. We serve a God of a new day, a God of a new season, a God of a new of a, of new things. It's just a God of new things. Every day, hey, the Lord has a better plan for us. He said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter twenty-nine, and verse eleven, that I have good plans for you. So, friends, you don't need to you don't need to seem like you're lonely. There's a Father who has a better plan for you. But they, but if you get out there. And, uh, and engage yourself in, uh, in war just, uh, just to solve your sadness because this friend, this friend came and killed me, so I'm going to revenge. Then, uh, then you, after revenging, you find yourself that, uh, that maybe you, 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 you do something bad to that friend. And uh, because, because the government maybe is looking for you, uh, you, end up, you, end up, uh, you end up committing suicide, which is not good. But the Bible says that I have good plans for you. The Lord has a better plan for you. He has a, he, he has a better promise for you. And so let us believe in him. He says that if you so believe in me, you'll have everlasting life. Instead of you committing suicide and ending up, uh, and ending up uh, having a valueless life, a life that, uh, that has no meaning, just believe in him. Believe that, Lord, I bring for you this problem. This is what I'm going through. Lord, help me out that I may grow into you. So meditate on the word of God. Often when we are sad, we are meditating on our loss, our sorrow, and how we wish things were different. We sit there, we, 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 think on, we think on the losses we've made, and how we think that things are going to work out. So turning that pondering into prayer and transferring meditation on sorrow to meditating on God's word can lift your spirit and relieve your sadness. So God has a hope and a future for all of us. And it is a future full of joy. God has a future full of joy for all of us. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter 51 and verse 12, that restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. These are the words of David. He said that restore to me the joy of your salvation. The Lord, this, this is something that each and every one of us must always do. The Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation. In James chapter 5 and verse 13, the Bible says that uh, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. So if you're if you're going through if you're going through problem, then pray. We serve a God who hears. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He's always alert. He knows what we're going through, but he wants us to communicate with him. Learn to communicate with your father. He's a father that loves us. He's a father that cares for us. So I'll finish by the book of Isaiah chapter 61, verse 2 to 3. 
where Isaiah, Isaiah was saying that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I believe this is your encouragement, friend, that, uh, that as you continue to live this life, that there is a promise for God that to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those who are bound. If you're bound to sadness, Believe me you that there is hope for you. To, the Lord has promised, has a better promise for all of us. That he may be glorified. I believe that we are all going, that we are all going to apply the six strategies that I've shared today. About sadness and how to conquer it. And I believe that when you apply those six strategies, you're going to come out victorious. So I would like you to, oh, to just train yourself that each and every day, just learn to exercise, just learn to smile, hang out with friends, engage God in what you're going through, and you'll come out victorious, and the Lord shall bless you, the Lord shall keep you. Thank you so much for staying, uh, for, for watching me, and I believe that uh, this video is going to be of help to you. God bless you, God keep you, and God protect you. Thank you and God bless you so much. Thank you so much.